Hello YouTube world, Todd with Great Escape Farms here. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos over the next probably month or so on rainwater harvesting and part of it is or rainwater harvesting upgrade. So what it is, I'm going to keep the existing filter system and I'll actually do a separate video on that later. What I'm doing is removing my four 300 gallon IBC totes here and I'm replacing them with 1500 gallon uh, water storage systems here I guess you'd call them so I have two right there and I have one up there so this one was intact didn't have to do anything with it this one let's see that one right there had a crack in it and I've repaired the crack already you can see there's a dent on the right hand side I need to fix that dent and I'll probably do a separate video on that and then this one right here has a hole in it. I haven't repaired it yet, but it should be relatively easy to, to repair. So I'll repair that. Also, you'd notice the top part right here is kind of dented in compared to that one right there. So I need to knock that out as well. If the dents were lower, just the weight of the water would do it. But since both dents are up near the top, I need to uh, actually get inside and use a little hydraulic pressure along with some lumber to do it. So I have a plan in place. If you're interested in that, check out a separate video on that as far as getting dents out of the 1550 gallon water jugs here. So what the goal is for today is to remove, let's see, I have a pump on the other end there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut uh, about a couple foot out and then I'm gonna put a quick disconnect in there. And a quick disconnect is like what's right here. So I'll put a quick disconnect in there so that I can remove and do maintenance and stuff. And then I'm going to remove all the plumbing, remove the IBC totes. The pipe going up right here, I never did glue in because I had planned on expanding the system when we had a drought last year. And I realized that 1,200 gallons wasn't enough. I went through 1,200 gallons in a weekend with all the... Uh, the food forest and everything else that I'm just establishing. Once everything's established and the swales kick in and everything, I won't need as much water, but probably for the next year or two, I'm gonna need a good bit more water than 1200 gallons. So uh, because I saw that was an issue, I did not glue. So my first glue point is right up here at that T. So I can remove all this and put the 1550 gallons in. That way I keep the filter system, put the 1550 gallons in. All of the plumbing on the bottom side will have to change. I'm gonna re-architect that. The three 1500 gallon water catchments, I'm gonna put one here, I'm gonna put one back there, I'm gonna put one around the corner, and I'm still undecided. I may use the, tw uh, 12, the four 300 gallon IBC totes here and just put them around the corner here uh, up against the food forest. And let me take a walk back here and show you what we have. So I have a lot of dead space right here because this is the due north side and I get very little sun here. So I'm not going to be able to get much growing there. So I can definitely put IBC totes here and uh, as well as the other 1500 gallon tank. Or what I may do is take the IBC totes up to the mobile home there. I bought that last year and that's gonna be the Great Escape Farms headquarters. That will be uh, kind of my office up there. And I'm gonna be doing some a lot of uh, swells and food forests and stuff up there. So uh, that would give me 1200 gallons up there off the roof. And no sense letting all the water coming off the roof go to waste. So I will, uh, I will either find a way to dump it right into a swale and use it uh, right then and there or I will put the IBC totes up there. So like I say, I'm undecided on that and I don't have to make that decision right now because the way that I am planning on putting the piping in here is there's definitely gonna be a 1500 gallon tank here, definitely one there, definitely one right here in the corner area. And I will plumb it in in such a way that at any point in time I can add more water storage if I want. And also it'll be plumbed in, I can remove water storage and take it out elsewhere. So you notice I have little valves in this system already so I can add and remove stuff. A lot of quick, quick disconnects here because I am in a climate that freezes and that allows me to uh, quickly disconnect, get water out, uh, get plumbing out, rearrange and reconfigure a, as easily as possible. So that's it for right now. Let me go ahead and remove these IBC totes, bring some more mulch back here, level everything up and start getting the bigger tanks up.
So I just wanted to show you this real quick. I was dismantling the section that goes between the two right here and I had something I didn't think about. I came down and up and what that was, was a water trap. And of course this area gets below freezing. And I never even thought about it, but what it did is it broke this piece off here. It broke up that pipe up here. It broke here. So what happens is water gets trapped in there and it expands when we get cold. And we got down into the teens a couple times this winter. So when you're designing one of these, you got to make sure that there is no water trap anywhere. So I had, I thought everything worked out to get all the water out of here, but that one spot right there, uh, had I not been redesigning this this year, the way that it was set up, I wouldn't have even noticed it until I started collecting water and trying to use this thing. And then it would have been even more pain because then I would have needed it. Or it would have just been leaking everything out as I was catching water and I would have to troubleshoot and figure out why I was losing it. So definitely make sure you don't have any traps anywhere if you are in a climate that goes below freezing. Usually 32, 31, 30 degrees isn't too bad. But if you get down in the 20s or teens, you're definitely going to have issues like this. So definitely something to watch out for. So along the lines of lessons learned here, I want to point out something when you're purchasing equipment. So this is a quick disconnect right here. And I use this for draining water, moving pipes around and stuff like that. It saves me a lot of time. It allows you to just screw off and just quick disconnect there. One of the things I found, and it's happened to me several times at Lowe's and Home Depot and probably any of the big box stores, is you'll get it just like this. And the issue is it's missing an O-ring, so it will leak like a sieve. So you have to make sure, you have to open up each one that you get and make sure that you get this little rubber O-ring right here and it fits right in here. If it's not in place, move on, find another one, but you have to have that O-ring in order to seal it good, otherwise you're leaking all over the place here. And uh, Don't know about everybody else, but for me, it is a 45 minute one-way drive, so if it was, if, I end up not having it 45 minutes out there, stand in a returns line, then go find one that I, that is right, stand in a purchase line and 45 minutes back. So that costs a lot of time when you're working on a project. Okay guys, quick progress check here. So I have all the lower plumbing off. I have all of the upper plumbing pulled out at the T's here. Uh, that's three inch up there and I set that aside because I'll be reusing it, although uh, to make some cuts on it. A couple lessons learned here. So the last, fall so actually let me explain the system a little bit here up at the top i have a y connector and the water goes off to the left on during the winter and to the right during the summer when i'm collecting water so the right system as a filter system and I'll, i've explained that before in other videos and i will probably do a follow-up to this to explain the upper water system but the left system is used during the winter so it comes down the left here and i'm still in left mode right now and what I did is I had this black tube wedged up against it and a rock holding it and everything else. And I, I guess I just got enough water and stuff coming down during the winter, uh, during downpours and all that it fell off. And let me see, no, it did not on the back system over there. You can see it's still on, but this one did fall off. So I would uh, more permanently attach that. One other okay guys, I have the mulch down. Everything is level here. Uh, what I did is from the cement area here, I leveled out and that's all I needed to do because I know that the cement in the garage is level all the way across this way. So uh, I still have a little bit of fine tweaking to do and then I'll go ahead and just lay the tanks on top of this. The tanks will settle because the mulch is gonna break down. So I'm, I mean, it's gonna settle just cause we're gonna compact it, but as it breaks down, it will settle and move even more. However, that's not a big concern to me. The way I'm doing it with quick disconnects, it will be uh, just a couple hour task to move the tanks in the every spring and put new mulch underneath it. So the only time that I need the tanks is from May until about September. So other than that, I can store them, I can set them aside, I can, uh, I, I'm going to leave them in place, but uh, I can anytime during the winter, fall, winter, or, or very early spring, I can move the tanks and level them back out and fix it. So this isn't the best long-term solution if you just want to leave it be and not do anything with it. But a lot of the plumbing and stuff I have to take up anyhow or do something with because of the freezing here. So it's not going to be that big a deal for me. So I'm going to go ahead and start bringing the tanks out and placing them. And then I'll show you the final step. Okay, so the tanks are set. Everything is level and I'm 
I'll go up there and tell you a little bit more about those in a minute. Right here is my other one. This one has a good bit of maintenance I need to do yet, so I can't put it in place. Obviously, you see there's a great big dent here, so I need to knock that out. And down here, somewhere in this area, is a hole. There it is right here. So you can see right here, there's a hole. I'm, it's a little sharp. I could probably put my pinky up through it. So I need to repair that, and that one is going to hold a lot of pressure with water. So I'm going to have to reinforce it with screen and everything else. So that'll be the repair on this one will be a separate video. For these up here, I everything's level. I have them in place. I am getting ready to put the couplings on here. So this is a male two inch to a two inch PVC and it is going to go right here. One thing I wanna tell you to make sure you do is put on, I call it plumber's tape. It's white tape here that helps secure any leaks. You can see this one does not have it. And this one, oops, holding it backwards. This one does and actually you can barely see it there. What I do is I start up here at the end that's first gonna get threaded and I go in the direction of the threads and work up here. I only do one rotation at the end here and then all the way up at this opposite end here, I have about two or three loops around with the tape. Okay guys, I got uh, the connecting connection into the tub itself, a quick disconnect so I can disconnect it and change uh, uh, and or do maintenance on an individual uh, unit here. And I put the uh, shutoff valve, two inch shutoff valve, ball valve, on the outside that allows me to shut off this tank from the rest of the system and then I can do maintenance on it or whatever needs to be done and then on this end which I'm just gonna leave open for now I will connect it up to the entire system and eventually we'll have 45 gallons together so that's the output side the input side is up here and I need to do some add some screens in and stuff like that so I don't have issues with uh, mosquitoes uh, I just sort of ran out of time and materials today, so nothing is glued at the moment. It's just kind of sitting in there. Uh, I don't know if I'll stick with this design. I may end up gluing it, uh, and I'll probably leave one connection. What I'll probably do is glue everything up and leave this connection right here unglued so that I can actually leave that piece up there and I can disconnect all this in case this tank has to come out uh, for maintenance. So. Uh, this one over here is temporary. I ran out of parts. I, what I really need is a, uh, a union to add in and come in a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle down. But I, I did not have the union, so I will pick that up this week. So right now everything is just temporarily put together with parts that I did have. So I will uh, shore this one up later. And let me come around here. And this one has the same thing. And some of you may ask, uh, what kind of maintenance would you have on a tank? And these threads right here on the black piece were uh, cross-threaded or whatever, stripped out. So I had a bear of a time getting this thing in. I may have to order a new one of these, and I'll have to search around and see if I can find it. So uh, that would definitely be maintenance there. Other maintenance, this particular tank, let me back off. You can see it is white. Whereas the other one over there is green. The other one will not allow sunlight in. This one will. So this could cause an algae problem. Uh, with where I'm at, I'll only get about two hours of sunlight a day on it. So I, what I did with the IBC totes is I covered them with black plastic. So this I can go through with spray paint. I can probably do it in place. But if, it, if I do need to remove it from the system, I can pump all the water out into the other tanks and uh, discon disconnect it down here and then go ahead and paint it. So that's it for this weekend. Next weekend, I will get out here and hopefully get some more done on this. So uh, keep an eye out for future videos. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and hope you have a wonderful day.